In this tutorial, we're going to look at local data persistence on the Android platform. On Android, we have several options for persisting data locally on the device. First of all, we can use uh, preferences, which are basically simple name value pairs that we can have Android store for us. We also have access to files and directories. So just like you've used um, standard input and output uh, packages, java.io in the past, you can do the same thing um, in Android and you can access the private directory that on the file system that's associated with the app. And then finally we can look, we can work with SQLite database uh, databases, which SQLite is basically a, a small footprint relational database system that is incorporated in the Android platform. In the remainder of this tutorial, we're going to look at preferences on Android, and we'll leave the other two topics um, for a future tutorial. But in terms of guidelines, which of these you should use in which situation, um, we're going to use preferences for simple scenarios that involve a small amount of data. Uh, perhaps you have some configuration options or some user settings or preferences within the app. Um, by all means, use preferences. It's quick and easy and it works very well. If you've got something that's a little bit more uh, bulkier, bulkier but not necessarily structured, um, for example, you're downloading some large files, maybe images or MP3s or other things, then you'll probably want to um, use the file APIs and put that out on the device's SD card. And then finally, if you've got structured data, um, you know, you'll probably want to use the database. So any use case where you would typically want to store the data in a relational database, then go ahead and use that SQLite database. So let's take a look at preferences. On Android, preferences are simple name value pairs that we can store, and they come in two flavors. We can use what is called private preferences, which are specific to a given activity, or we can use shared preferences, which can be accessed by any activity in the app and possibly by other applications as well. So here's some simple code demonstrating um, private preferences. So the first thing I do here is I get a reference to my shared preferences by simply calling in the context of my activity this.getPreferences and I'll pass mode private to indicate that these are private preferences. I can retrieve a specific preference setting by calling get string, for example. In this case, I'm looking for a preference with a name of my pref and the value of default val. We can also store a preference by get asking the preferences uh, object for its editor. We do that by calling the edit method. And then on the editor, we can call put string. And in this case, I'm putting a string by the name of my, the name is my additional pref, and the value that I'm setting on that string is my pref settings. And once I've done that, when I'm done doing my put strings, I need to call editor.commit to persist those. Here's an example of the second type, shared preferences. So in this case, I'm getting a reference to shared prefs, and I'm going to give this preference collection a name. So in this case, they're my app settings. And notice how I've set the permission on these to be mode world readable. So I don't care if others go ahead and read this. Once I've got my shared preference reference, it's going to work just like the previous example. So for example, I can call get string, pass in a name, and get back a value. And similarly, I can store shared preferences just like we saw in the previous slide. So where does Android actually store these preferences? Well, Android stores your preferences in an app's private data directory. And you'll find this on the file system under slash data, slash data, slash, and then your app's package name, slash, in a, in a directory called shared underscore prefs. The data is going to be actually stored in XML format. And if you're using private prefs, then the name of that XML file is simply going to be 
the name of your activity with a .xml appended to it. If you're doing shared prefs, then the name that you gave it when you got a reference to the shared prefs object is going to be the name that's used for the XML file. So you can browse that file system in your emulator devices using the DDMS perspective inside Eclipse, assuming you've got the Android Developer Toolkit plugin installed. And here you can see an example where I've gone down to the data slash data directory and then under my package name you see a subdirectory here called shared prefs and there's a couple of XML files there. One is a private set of preferences for an activity called my activity. The other was a shared preference with a name my shared prefs. And if I double clicked or downloaded one of those and examined the contents it would look something like this. So how do you share preferences across applications? Well here's a code fragment that shows a uh, activity opening up preferences that were created by another application. So what I need to do first is I need to create a context for the external application. So I'm gonna call create package context and I'm gonna pass in the package name of that application. So it's the package that appeared in the manifest for the particular app that generated these preferences. Once I've done that, I can call on that context object the method get shared preferences, pass in the name of the preferences and a permissions flag, and now I'm basically interacting with that preference in the same way. So I, in this example, I'm asking for a preference string of remember me, and I set a default value of not found in case it's not there, it'll get set to not found. And then I go ahead and, and do a set text on one of my text view elements. Now there's a second way to do preferences in Android. And this is um, by extending the preference activity, which is a class that's defined by the Android SDK. So here's a fragment of code that shows me implementing a class called my activity and it extends the preference activity class. And what I can do in my onCreate, instead of doing a set content view in the normal way, I can call add preferences from resource and go ahead and give an XML resource file name here. So if we went down under our resources directory and looked in that file, it would look something like this. So in this particular XML, I'm saying for the preference screen, I have two different fields that the user is going to be able to change. One for username and one for password. And you can see on there that I've got the text for the UI as well as the actual keys that the values entered by the user will be stored by. And here would be an example of the UI over on the right, what that particular pref preference screen would look like. Uh, if we had an XML file, a preference XML file defined as in the previous screen. And if we were to go out to the file explorer, you'll see those in uh, a file just like we did before under shared preferences. So let's go into Eclipse and take a look at preferences and see how we can use them in an actual application. And we'll also um, look at how to share preferences across the application. And finally, we'll go ahead and look at an example that uses the Android preference framework that we just discussed. All right, so I've got a another demo here where I'm just looking at the store JPIs and so this first example here is the shared preference so notice I'm just calling get preferences here in my on create setting mode private and this then is this private preferences just for this particular activity the file name is going to be the name of my activity, myactivity.xml, under that shared prefs. So once I've gotten that, I can go ahead and I can pull out individual values. If it's not there, I get the default, and then I can actually edit 
and write to it. Um, a little bit further here is my example of a shared preference. So in the shared preference, remember, you're actually giving the name of the collection of preferences. And in this case, I'm making it world readable. And then I'm going ahead, I'm getting a name out of it. If it's not there, I'm going to set it to John Doe by default. And the actual editing and storing of preferences is exactly the same in these two sets. So if we run this and then look at the file system, Okay, it's not going to do anything but just put up a thing, but in on create, it just executed those commands. So if we go over to DDMS, we should find those settings here. Sure enough, there's my private ones, and there is my uh, shared preferences that I just created. And if I downloaded those files to my local file system on my computer, open them up with my text editor, they're just going to be the XML of the data that we just saw in that code. The last thing I'll show you here quickly is the fact that I can write a completely separate application. So I've got a, oop, not this one. I have one called another prefs demo right here. And what I've done here, remember I created that one with mode world readable. So what I've done down here is I've gone ahead and created this context object pointing to the package of my original preference demo. Then I can call and actually open up that preference, shared preference collection and pull out something that was set there before. So if we re go back to that one, um, remember we put remember me and then we set it to some important data. So what I'm expecting down here is when I pull this out, it's going to be some important data and then I'm going to set that on the on the text field that it's it's showing up. So if we run this, we can prove that we're actually accessing data cr preferences created by one application from another. There you go. So if we some important data, okay? So it is perfectly possible. All right. So let's first just take a quick peek at that um, the one I just talked about the preferences framework. So this is the exact code I had in the view graph. So I've got an activity and all I've done was extended the preference activity from it and I don't have to set a, a content view here. All I need to do is add preferences that are defined externally in a resource file. And let's just take a quick peek at that file. So it's under resources XML preferences and it's the screen we just looked at, right? Real nice and simple. And let's just run this so you can see what it, what you get. Okay. Um, if I click on these buttons, I think my emulator's just kind of... Okay, so here's my... Okay, so if I exit out of here, I've exited the app now, and if we go back in there and run it, If I knew where it was, now let's just go over here. Okay, so all the data is persisted, and we could also go off to the DDMS, and here it is. So I'm under the file explorer, I'm under data, data package name, shared prefs, and this is the actual file. How could I get that down to my local file system and read it if I wanted to? Remember this trick, so I can just go up here, click the disk, and let's give this a... Oh, it's already got that extension, so we'll put it there. 
And if I go to my home directory, okay, there it is.